them. Uh, here we are in hour number two on a, uh, what's today, Thursday, first day of our amazing trip to Israel. I thank everybody out there for joining us and for uh, uh, being part of our adventure here in Israel. Uh, we're in Jerusalem today at the Nefesh B'Nefesh headquarters, the broadcast center in northwest Jerusalem. Uh, a little bit of a change in our itinerary. That's where we are spending our Thursday. Friday tomorrow at the big celebration in Stay Road. We'll be there in advance of the Hachnas Sefer Torah that we've been talking about for the last three months. Uh, we'll be there with um, Simon and Dr. Joe and a whole contingent. Some very prominent people will be joining us tomorrow, and I'm really looking forward to the show next week from both Jerusalem and then, of course, uh, from uh, Tel Aviv Ben Gurion Airport on Tuesday with Nefesh Ben Nefesh when the big flight lands in Israel. A big thank you to PC Guy. Don't forget his contact information. He is our chief engineer for this trip, and I thank him. If you need a brand new PC or if you want to fix your PC from thousands of miles away, I've mentioned many times on the air, if I walk through my living room early in the morning and I see somebody using the computer and there's nobody in front of it, I know it's PC guy who's logged in and fixing everything. So I thank him. And the information about his service is 054-943-6109. A big thank you to Stan back in our studio. Tonight's the big bake sale, don't forget. Yashar Lachayal is the beneficiary. The bake sale happening at the home of Stacy Siegel that begins at 4 p.m. this afternoon until 9 o'clock. It seems to be the talk of the town, even way beyond the uh, the Manhattan area. Uh, they were even talking about it at the Inbal Hotel this morning. How do you like that? Uh, so that's happening tonight. Just to show up and enjoy. You can contact Stacy Siegel for information. Um, and I want to thank the Inbal Hotel. They are one of the sponsors of this journey, and they are being very hospitable to us on this trip, as they always are, they have uh, continued to renovate and uh, and uh, really um, uh, advance a hotel that was always beautiful and gorgeous, but now is as is it now is as beautiful and gorgeous as ever. Uh, so, if you're planning on coming to Israel, we're recommending the Inbal. You can search them online, I N B A L, and I thank them for providing such amazing hospitality for us during this trip. We are highlighting today. What were we going to do with today's show once our plans were altered? What were we going to do from the Nefesh Benefesh headquarters, aside from our guests from Nefesh Benefesh? And we said we're going to highlight some of the organizations that have really stepped it up during the war to help our fellow brethren in the state of Israel. And when you talk about organizations that really step things up on a daily basis, on a regular basis, not just during wartime, United Hatzalah of Israel is certainly one of them. Uh, Dove Maisel is with us, Director of International Operations for the uh, United Hatzalah of Israel. Dove, welcome to JM in the AM. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, we've had Eli Beer on the show before in the past. That's your leader. He has described the amazing work of Hatzalah. We actually had an opportunity to broadcast from Hatzalah headquarters in Jerusalem a little while ago. I don't know if you were there for that show or not. Were you there? No, you I was were not, not there, there, but I listened show? to the show. I appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, I can only imagine what's been happening over the last few weeks. Because on a regular day, right, forget wartime, on a regular day, how many calls is United Hatzalah of Israel answering? Well, on the average day-to-day, -day, we answer, respond to approximately about 650 emergency medical calls. And that could be country. anywhere in the country. That's throughout the country. Um, and uh, during this turmoil, this operation, obviously that dramatically raised the number of, of uh, calls that we need to deal with, you know, stress-related calls, the sirens that go off and send us all to the shelters. At the same time, people are dealing with stress, and it it, it sparks medical emergencies, heart attacks, right. and and the different other uh, medical emergencies. Not that I ask this in a clinical fashion. I'm not a doctor, but the shock element, and I mean real cases of real shock. I assume go way up during wartime. Absolutely, 100%. And especially I mean, during wartime when civilians are being aimed at and civilians are being told by authorities, get to a shelter as soon as possible. Absolutely. Just living uh, with the thought that you need to keep thinking of when you're walking down the street, where is the nearest place to hide? You're already on automatically on a higher stress level. Right. So when the siren suddenly goes off, you start looking to the right and to the left and running, that elevates your heart rhythm and everything, and you're stressed out. And, and this can, can affect, in many ways, psychologically and physically. And I'm sorry for smiling or laughing, but it, you, 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 you help me recall, I land in Israel yesterday, and the first sign I see as I'm walking off the Merchav plane, Mugan. <laughs> it's Mikla telling you where to go in an emergency. And ironically enough, a couple of weeks back, we were in a red alert in the airport, 
And it, it, again, the airport, I think, relatively speaking, is a pretty well-protected building, especially the new terminal, right? Absolutely. So, th so that that ha hovers over you. That thank God you're in a pretty secure location. And also, we know the odds of the airport being hit are probably, you know, not great. It, it, you know, are probably very long odds. With all of that, when you're in that pack of people that is rushing to get to a McLot. I understand the heart attacks, and I understand the shock, and I understand the stress, and I'm glad I went through it just for that reason, to see what so many thousands in Israel had been going through during this war. It's, it's very true. It's very true. It's a situation that, uh, that, I mean, you can't even imagine it until you actually feel it. Right. Whether you're at home or in the shopping mall or walking down the street and that siren goes off, what do you do? Immediately you start running. I just, a personal story is I was uh, with, with my kids um, uh, a couple of weeks ago in the park, and uh, suddenly the siren went off, and I'm with three kids there in the park, and I look to the right and the left, where am I going to run with the kids? And, and, you, only have, and you only have two hands. <laughs> exactly, and, and immediately I run, and obviously my radio is going off, telling us to gear up, put on our protective equipment and everything, and I'm not thinking about the protective equipment, I'm thinking about the kids, where do I hide with them? I mean, it, it, it's, it's an absurd situation, and until you don't actually experience it, it's very, very difficult to understand. Dove Maisel is Director of International Operations for United Hatzalah, the best way to support United Hatzalah is through the web, I guess, Absolutely. Right? Isra What's the web address? Israelrescue.org. Israelrescue.org. That would be it. And now you have, uh, we talked about you know all the different cases, 650 calls a day, etc., on a regular day. Obviously, that number went way up during wartime for the reasons you just described. But how many volunteers are there now that are part of this whole hot solar system? There are now 2,300 volunteers throughout the country. That's an insane percentage, right? It's a, it's, it's We're not used to those types of numbers in the U.S. And no, and it's unprecedented. Our response time is a result of that, and yet right. our response time is an average of three minutes. So you're always it, working on that, but it keeps getting better and better. Exactly. Uh, it's simple math. The more volunteers we have out there in the field with equipment, the shorter response time. I mean, right. we, we reinvented the, the term called pre ambulance service i mean it takes an ambulance 10 minutes to get there 12 minutes to get there our average response time is three minutes so that's the difference between life and death and especially now during this operation time when we have our volunteers um when everybody's running to the shelters and and they're going to the safe rooms, shelters whatever it is our volunteers gear up with protective gear bulletproof vests and helmets and actually run out on calls because of those emergency calls don't stop because of the siren there was a story just Last week in Ranana, a uh, siren went off. Everybody was running to the shelters. Immediately a call of a woman that uh, was going into labor. Right. So our volunteers there with an ambicycle, with his helmet, bulletproof vest, jumped out and actually delivered this baby while, while everybody was hiding in the shelters. There were two sirens, one after another. And he delivered the baby. By the time the ambulance got there, the baby was already wrapped up, Baruch Hashem, like a candy and ready to go to the hospital in his <laughs> mother's hands. I mean... <laughs> Oh, yeah, unbelievable. I'm sure you have a million stories. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, I would guess that, God forbid, if somebody, I don't know, was hit by shrapnel or, you know, we have heard of, you know, homes that were hit and obviously then you have to check out the kids or, or adults that, you know, that were in the house as a result of that. I assume the first call is to Hot Solo, right? To Absolutely, 100%. Our volunteers actually, uh, when everybody's going into the shelters, they're immediately going out towards the detonation areas where the shrapnel is falling to immediately find those people who might have been affected or injured by the shrapnel there. And uh, unfortunately, we've had a number of these calls down in, in Kiryat Gat, in Bersheva, in, uh, in Ashdod. And uh, un unfortunately, these incidents happened, but our volunteers were literally there within a minute or two on the scene already, not only treating the patients, but giving the information exactly where it is for the army, for the ambulances and everything else that were Am coming I right in. that Ellie Beer himself was right there some episode that happened? Absolutely. Right, what happened? Absolutely. Was Ellie was a, if I'm not mistaken, it was the incident in Ashdod. Right. There was, there were, it was something like seven or nine missiles that were shot towards Ashdod. Uh, a number of them were detonated by Iron Dome, and a few of them uh, hit a, a parking lot of a building, um, causing a big fire and explosion of a number of cars there. There were, must have been something like 15 people affected by that, some of them from shrapnel, some of them... Right. Um, uh, emotional response, stress-related. And he happened to be on the spot, right? He happened to be. He had gone down uh, south that day together with uh, the team of, uh, of uh, volunteers with equipment, with uh, protective gear that we had gotten donated that same day. He got the shipment and immediately went down to Ashdod, and they had just finished giving out these protective vests to the volunteers, and they didn't even need to wait 10 minutes. They already threw them on and ran out to, the, to this call. It was Unbelievable. 
Dove Maisel is with us, uh, IsraelRescue.org. It's uh, United Hatzalah for Israel. Is there one specific piece of equipment that you know people could donate to today? Like, is there something you're looking for to upgrade the personnel or to give them something that they may not have till this point? Well, I, I think the most basic. I mean, Baruch Hashem, uh, we're equipped now with uh, uh, medical with uh, uh, protective gear for our volunteers. We have uh, generous uh, people from all over supporting us throughout this effort. And uh, I think that the, going back to basics, defibrillators. Medical equipment, you always use ambicycles, those. those are, it's, it's simple math. The more equipment we have to give volunteers out in the field, the shorter the response time, the more lives are saved. Do you have any idea how many ambicycles are out there right now? Yeah, absolutely. We have approximately 300 ambicycles oh, spread so you, out you throughout the country. You can certainly use another one or 200. Uh, I, mean, I, I would say at least 300, right. but you know. So there's plenty of room for people to get Our, our ultimate mission, our average response time now is three minutes. Right. Our ultimate mission is to get down to 90 seconds. Right. And the math is simple. We double up our amount of volunteers and ambicycles out there. We drop the response time. And Hatzala members in the United States might find this interesting. You actually have a system where where the where you know where your Hatzala exactly, member is at yeah. that moment. We, we've developed. A, what, is that a GPS related? Thing? It's it's related with GPS and cellular. It's state of the art that we developed six years ago and keep upgrading. It's called the Life Compass system. From that's something we would from, not have in the U.S. Right? From now forth, it's it's not existent in Hatzala there yet. Right. We hope we we hope uh, that eventually it will be. As so well. your central command station knows where everyone is. So if someone calls from a specific house. You would literally radio that Hatzala member. We know to, n to notify the system. We can't see the volunteer. It's right. very smart technology, so they have their privacy. Right. But the system can see them. And immediately when there's an emergency call, we put the address in. And the, we have 200 pre-planned algorithms in the system that within 10 or 20 seconds, it locates the nearest by volunteers, paramedics, EMTs, to respond to the scene. So that's had to have helped with the response time, for Un sure, right? Unbelievable. That, absolutely, because right. you don't need to absolutely listen to the radio all day long and hear about the call. The system knows to see you exactly where you are, and if there's a call nearby you around the block or in the building next door, you're going to know about it. And I think Hatzala leadership from the U.S. actually took a tour of that with you, right? I think they were in the headquarters. They were in headquarters, they absolutely. they saw how this whole thing they saw it. We hope that one day they'll right. actually uh, jump on board with it. I mean, we, we, we're opening. We want all the Hatzalas in the world, our colleagues and, and, right. and, and friends, to join and, and value from this technology. All right, Dove. Best way to support is IsraelRescue.org. Absolutely. Uh, the the war has uh, has certainly called your volunteers into higher service uh, over yeah. the last few weeks. To yeah, say the least. kept them very kept, <laughs> kept them very very busy. <laughs> but you know what? As we say, we never have a dull moment anyway. That's so. true. But is, but can we say that today's already a little slower or? Uh, Reg regular. It's a know, regular day. Heart attacks are happening, unfortunately, right. and Baruch Hashem, babies are being delivered. Right. So That's true. There's plenty of work to be done. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, check out IsraelRescue.org. Dove Maisel is Director of International Operations for Hatzalah, United Hatzalah of Israel, and everybody's invited to uh, support their incredible work. And uh, like we say, today we're spending time uh, literally uh, with organizations that have stepped things up over the last few weeks. Uh, no choice but to step things up. Uh, organizations have had to be there with uh, more donations, with more money, with more food, with more packages, and in this case, with more rescue efforts and rescue attempts, uh, courtesy of Hatzala Israel. Uh, they're doing amazing work, as we know, and we commend them. More coming up. We're at the Nefesh Benefesh headquarters, our broadcast center for today, Thursday, JM in the AM. Uh, keep it here, folks. Plenty more guests tomorrow live from Stay Road, which should be very, very interesting as we kick off the big Stay Road uh, Hachnasa Sefer Torah celebration that we've been talking about for the last three months or so. We did not cancel our trip. Some people would say, hey, you know, three months ago you planned to be in Stay Road. Why not postpone the trip now? Uh, why not cancel the trip? And because we know of plenty of groups and simchas, uh, simcha groups from the United States that have canceled and postponed uh, to the uh, anger and the depression of uh, many people here in Israel who expressed to me how disappointed they were that people would cancel. And for some reason, when it came to us, it just stepped up our efforts to come to Stay Road and to join everybody in Stay Road at a time like this, and we'll be there tomorrow and looking forward to an amazing show. Uh, plenty more from Nefesh Benefesh Broadcast Center in Northwest Jerusalem if you keep it here at JM in the AM.